The New York Knicks, they've won five out of their last six games, all since the team traded for OG Ananobi. The Knickerbockers, they did lose their last game to the Mavericks in Dallas, and they will end a two-game trip on Saturday night in Memphis. Here to talk some Knicks basketball with me is a co-host for Knicks Fan TV, Alex Fateris. He joins me now. Alex, how's it going? I'm good, Dexter. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, but we have to go back to something that wasn't so good for the Knicks mm. on Thursday night, where the Knicks got down by as many as 21 points and rallied back to cut it to one, only to fall short to a Mavs team without Luka Doncic. Now, I know the Knicks did won five games in a row heading into this that matchup, but was there any concern with you for how the team started that game? You know, Dexter, there, there's no concern with me on how the Knicks started that game. On You know, there's just going to be nights throughout a regular 82-game season where the Knicks or any other team is just going to fall flat on some nights. So, it, to me, it's not a big concern. Look, we just had the Boston Celtics, even though they played the second game of a back-to-back -back against the Milwaukee Bucks, the Bucks beat the brakes off of them. You had the Kings playing the 76ers last night. The 76ers who were missing Joel Embiid and Kelly Oubre, while the Kings were just missing Kevin Herter, you know, they lost – and they pulled their starters with about like five, six minutes to go on the fourth quarter. So to me, it's not a big concern. It's nice to see that the Knicks are able to bounce back. Knicks were able to compete in that game late in the fourth quarter. But to me, that's not the that's not a big concern. Moving forward, you know, I, the only concern for me is that bench depth because as we see in this game, is that Tom Thibodeau has to rely heavily on Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson with that second unit just to keep some offensive creativity out there and. I'm just worried about the increase in workload because as the season progresses, you want those guys fresh for when it gets to the playoffs and seeing them run, you know, whether it be 38 or plus minutes on a night to night basis, it just shows the emphasis for another scorer out there who can create their own shot. So moving forward, I'd like to see the Knicks address that. That's my only concern uh, against uh, the Dallas Mavericks who are missing not only Luka Doncic, but they were missing Dante Exum, Derek Lively. So they were down three starters, but look, that's my biggest concern is the bench depth. Yeah, I think it's a fair and valid concern, and there'll be a lot of talk as we move up to the trade deadline about whether the Knicks will address that concern. Will they try to get another ball hand or scorer that can come off the bench and help the two stars in Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle? Speaking of the Knicks, we've got to talk about the impact of OG with the team thus far. 5-1 record, as I mentioned, since the trade. But what is it for you about the addition of the new wing that you believe has helped the team thus far? You know, there's so many things that OG Ananobi has helped this Knicks basketball team, this Knicks basketball team, and it's like you could talk about this. The you could talk about the offense. Obviously, the defense is going to stand out because he's a versatile wing defender. He can guard one through five, uh, depending on for five, depending on the night. But one through four, definitely. And you just see how much he's just improved the defense. I mean, the Knicks right now they came in prior to the OG Ananobi trade being. Uh, was it 20th in defensive rating that already jumped to number one in the league since the trade with OG Ananobi and that's without Mitchell Robinson too right you got to give a shout out to Isaiah Hartenstein for how he's playing but the fact that the OG trade could impact the Knicks defense that much where he's they're playing top tier defense that's number one that's because of his versatility you see him guarding whether it be Anthony Edwards Kyrie Irving uh, Carl Anthony Towns I mean OG's just been so impactful on the defensive end. But offensively, he's given them much more spacing. You know, with RJ, you didn't get that reliable three-point shooting that OG has been giving you. So the fact that he can shoot the three and defend, giving you that prototypical three and D type player that the Knicks have been looking for, you see that Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle are able to get to their spots going downhill, and it just opens up those lanes for them. So the Knicks offense now has that spacing. You include Dante DiVincenzo three-point shooting as well. The Knicks starting unit just looks great offensively. So OG's added a lot to this Knicks team. There's no doubt about it. His impact has definitely been there. You talked about the jump that we've seen the Knicks take on the defensive end since his addition into the lineup. Now, the Knicks, they'll take on the Grizzlies in Memphis, as we mentioned, on Saturday night. They're going to look to make it six wins in their last seven games. What are the keys to New York bouncing back and getting a win against the Grizzlies? Man, I hope the Knicks are ready just to go out there and compete because the Grizzlies team, even though they are bad offensively, they rank 29th in offensive rating on the season. They're number 10 right now in defensive rating. So from the get-go, the Knicks are going to have to meet that defensive intensity from the Memphis Grizzlies because I don't expect them to go out there and get easy shots from the get-go. So 
if the Knicks can match that defensive intensity with the Memphis Grizzlies, I think that the Knicks can wear down the Grizzlies to the point where when it gets to the second half, you know, the Knicks could come out there and get their offense because the Grizzlies are going to be tired. You can't just play defense the entire game. This game is about getting shots and, and making buckets. So if the Knicks can just wear down the Memphis Grizzlies to that second half and continue to just get offensive, you know, get their offensive production at certain moments throughout the first half, I think they can pour in the points in the second half and really take advantage of the Memphis Grizzlies. But the, the Grizzlies should not be taken lightly just because they have a bad record. They don't have John Moran or Steven Adams. This is still a competitive team, so the Knicks should just go out there and play their best brand of basketball. Well, Knicks cannot sleep on the Grizzlies in Memphis on Saturday night. We will see if they're able to get off to a good start, play some good defense, finish it, and get their sixth win in their last seven games. I'll be watching. Alex Trateris will also be watching. You can catch out his work on Knicks Fan TV. Go check that out. Alex, always good to talk some Knicks hoops with you. We will do this again soon. Dexter, thank you for having me on, as always. Always enjoy talking Knicks basketball with you. Anytime.